So in our last video for our review chapter, we're going to do some story problems, and then we're going to do piecewise functions. I know both of these give people some headaches, so I just want us to practice. So first off, these pictures are somewhat important. These go back to similar triangles in geometry. If we were comparing this small triangle to this larger triangle, we could say h is to r as t is to x plus t. Piece to larger is equal to piece to larger. Once we have that set up, we could just cross multiply and we'd be left with x plus t times h equals rt or x plus t equals rt over h or x is equal to rt over h minus t. So straightforward. What happens if you're given the longer side and then the shorter pieces? We need to compare like side to like side. So we could say r is to x, small to long, as, well, could we say h is related to t? No. So what we would have to do is find this missing piece in comparison to what we were given. And the way you would do that is this question mark is plus t squared is equal to x squared. So that missing side is really x squared minus t squared, or the square root of both of those. Now we have a comparison between what we were given, h, to this missing side piece. And now we can do the same thing, cross multiply. So we'd be left with r square root x squared minus t squared equals xh. And now we do a little more work. This is going to involve a quadratic. So in order to solve all of these, we would get the square root by itself. I'm just giving myself a little bit more room. So it would be square root x squared minus t squared is equal to xh over r. Then we'd square both sides. x squared minus t squared is equal to x squared h squared over r squared. We have to get everything that has an x on the same side. So we'd have x squared minus x squared h squared over r squared equals t squared. GCF of those two is an x squared term. So we'd be left with 1 minus h squared over r squared equals t squared. We divide both sides. x squared is equal to t squared over 1 minus h squared over r squared. Then we just take the square root of both of those. So you can see it looks simple, but then we can get much more complicated much faster. So we're going to skip example A, and we're going to jump to example B. So pretend you're looking at a basketball layout. Find the formula of the perimeter of the window of the shape in the figure. All we are given is the radius of the circle. So we'd have to think, if we were looking at this half circle, how do you find the perimeter of a circle? Well, we call that the circumference. The circumference, the circumference of a full circle is 2 pi r. This is a semicircle. So we would say pi r. This is half the circumference. Now then, we're just tabulating how much each of these lengths are. So if each of them are r, we have 1r. So we play r plus the width side is 2r plus another r. Well, if we add all these up, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 r's. Everything has an r, so we could factor this out simply as r parentheses pi plus 4. So that's not that bad. But once we start putting these problems into context, now we have to do a little bit more work. So a water tank is a shape of a cone. So here's a cone, kind of like what you would get at a, a dentist's office if you're getting water. The tank is 10 meters high. So from top to bottom, 
that's 10 meters and has a radius of three meters at the top. The water is five meters deep. What is the surface area of the top of the water? So the surface area is A equals pi r squared. And what we're looking for is this radius down here. So that work that we did previously is now we have, if I redraw this, oops, we have our height and our diagonal. This is five, that's r. And then we have a different triangle that they are similar to, but this is three and this is 10. Since we know these two are related because they're similar, we can find out a value to solve for r. So we could say r is to three as five is to 10, or r is equal to three over two or 1.5. Now, once we solve that, all we have to do is plug it into our formula. So it would be pi times three over two squared, which is nine pi over four. And that we're talking about the surface area, and this is in meters squared. So we provide our units. Other types of interesting problems you will see. Let's see, two cars start moving from the same point. One travels south, going 100 kilometers per hour. So let's say south equals 100 kilometers per hour. And the other, west, Let's make sure I have that in the right direction. West equals 50 kilometers per hour. How far apart they, are they after two hours? Okay, well, if you're traveling west at 50 kilometers per hour, you've traveled 100 kilometers. Likewise, if you're going south, you traveled 200 kilometers in that hour. And now that allows us to find the distance between those two. And that's just a Pythagorean theorem problem. D squared is equal to 100 squared plus 200 squared, which is similar to one plus four, or the square root of five. Only in this case, we'll have 100 square root five, which is approximately 223.607 kilometers. If you take the square root of both of those. So this is where you could use a calculator I don't have one to save time for you guys. So let's just keep moving. Last type of story problems. A kite is 100 meters. Let's see, let's draw me a fancy kite. A kite is 100 meters above the ground. If there, if there are 200 meters of string out, so here's the string for a person holding it. 200 meters, that's a lot of string. At what angle is between that person and the horizontal? So we had to think, now we have a triangle. Here's a right triangle. We have the opposite side, we have the hypotenuse. So we're using sine of 100 over 200 or one over two. If I say, what is the inverse sine of one half? I'm asking you on the unit circle, where is the y value one half? And our answer is going to be at pi over six or 30 degrees. We're gonna keep with the radians. So our answer would be pi over six. Our last concept, and we are going to do a Desmos lab in class for piecewise, is we want to graph things in pieces. That's what the definition of a piecewise graph is. So if we look at G, it has three parts. The inequality part tells you where you would have this shape. So to the left, this is how I read this, to the left of negative one, our graph looks like x squared. So I'm gonna draw my x, y coordinate plane and starting at negative one. If I plugged in negative one to x squared, I get 
one out. If I plugged in negative two, I get four out. Because this is less than, my graph is going to have a hole there. Don't worry, it's gonna get filled in. So now we've done the first part. The second part says, between negative one and positive one horizontally, my y value is one. So I will, different color, for part two, from negative one to positive one, and I fill both of those circles in because I have less than or equal to, less than or equal to. And then my third part is saying, to the right of one, I look like the graph x, or a linear function. So I'm here, and then the next value go up one, right one, up one, right one. So my three pieces are a portion of a parabola, a horizontal line, and then a linear function. So as long as you take it in parts, it's not that bad. Last two problems for our review. Same concept. We're gonna do it in three parts and do it in three colors. So here's my xy coordinate plane. To the left of zero, arrows pointing that way, I look like the line one minus x. So step one, plug in zero. If I plug in zero, I get one. I use a open circle there because I can't be that value. If I plugged in negative one, I would get two out. If I plugged in negative two, I'd get three out. So my graph goes to the left for this first portion. For my second portion, I look like the graph x from zero to two. So I start with my lower value, plug in zero, I get zero. If I plug in one, two, I should get two out. Both of those are filled in circles because I can be those values. Sorry, I can be the first one. That's my mistake, Mr. Swenson. I have an open circle at two, two because I can't be two. Lastly, let's do a different color, purple. To the right of two, I am negative one. So I go down to negative one. I have a open circle and I am the same value going off towards infinity. So piecewise function, graph in pieces. That's all. And this last one, I know it's formatted weird. What this function is, that you might never have seen before is the greatest integer function. It actually goes two ways. It could either be a floor function or a ceiling function, depending on how you read this. We're gonna interpret the greatest integer function as a floor. So what is an integer? An integer is a positive or negative whole number. And the way the greatest integer function works is, let's say we are 0.5. We are going to round that down. So any values from zero to one, we would be zero. Likewise, if I'm 1.2 or 1.3, then the number that gets spit out is one. If I am between two and three, then I will be two. The other word that we use to describe this function is a step function. And this is our first one that we see that we don't connect each of these intervals. So it is a fancy word, discontinuous. So hopefully this review chapter has been helpful. I know we have quite a number of problems to do, um, but we should be ready after these notes and the, pro the, the review problems to be able to take our test. So I will see you in class, Falcons. Make sure you bring any questions that you have, and hopefully we'll enjoy this little Desmos lab showing you how to do piecewise functions. Okay, see you later.